Hey, thanks for coming back for the third video in this segment on ACT Science. We're fixing to go over the second passage, but first I want to take just a minute to help orient you. If you'll look at this passage and you flip to it, you're going to see there's lots of graphs on this page. There's a couple of things I want to point out to you about graphs on the ACT. When you come to a graph, you don't just jump over it and hope you'll come back and figure it out. You always want to look, what is this graph telling me? Every graph tells you some information, and the more you understand that information when you're going through it, the better it's going to be when you're trying to answer questions on it. But there's a few key things you want to notice when the ACT gives you some graphs. First of all, when you come to one, you want to see where is zero, zero. A lot of times on the ACT, they will give you graphs where zero, zero is not in the lower left-hand corner. We're used to that, and in this particular example uh, on passage two, you're going to see they're all in zero, zero is down in the lower left corner. But I've seen a lot of them where zero will be at the top. If we're talking about something as far as the ocean goes, and you're measuring from the top of the ocean down, if we're drilling holes in the ground for core samples, zero is at the top, and this is increasing depth. Going down is increasing. A lot of times they even put the zero somewhere in the middle, not at the top or the bottom. If you're looking at a volcano that's making an island in the ocean, what you're going to see is a certain amount of it is going to be below the ocean level, a certain amount is going to be above it. The part that's above it is a mountain or the island, and the part that's below it is still under sea. So it makes sense that you would have something laid out like this, and this graph would have zero somewhere in the middle. The second thing you want to look at when you come to a graph on the ACT test is look at your axes. This is the Y axis up here, Y. This is your X axis. Notice when you look at this, is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Which way is increasing? Which way is decreasing? And next, the third thing is you'll see frequently a key. On a line graph, they'll have a key showing you which one is, which one of the lines is. Some of the lines will have little dashes in them. Some of them will be solid lines, and some of them may have other complex designs. I've seen as many as six and seven lines on one graph, so they've got a lot of different patterns that they choose from. You want to look at that and study that key. If it, ta if it takes you 15 or 20 seconds to study it, it's worth the time to do that. All right, I'll point a couple of other things out when we get to them on this, on this passage. Right now, flipping your book to page 44. Again, out of this test booklet, page 44, passage 2. Follow along as I read Color images of the surface of Io, one of Jupiter's moons, show plumes of gas that resemble Earth's geysers and active volcanoes that emit flows of molten material. The materials ejected from Io's volcanoes and plumes rapidly solidify at Io's cold surface temperatures. Scientists believe that these materials may be one of several allotropes, and the word allotropes here means forms of sulfur, which they're representing by the chemical symbol S, or a sulfur compound. The following studies were performed to determine the composition of these materials. Study one, in a laboratory, scientists measured the reflectances. Now they're not sure you know what reflectances are, what reflectances means, so they give you the definition in parentheses. It's the fraction of light striking a surface that's reflected by that surface of four allotropes of sulfur, red, white, orange, and brown, and a sulfur compound, SO2, sulfur dioxide. All right, reflectances were measured at visible light wavelengths. This means 0.35 micrometers and 0.6 micrometers. Figure one shows the data of the various S allotropes and for SO2. So when you come to this graph, you want to look at it. Take a minute, look at your x-axis across here, 0.35 going up, that's increasing. Look at your y-axis. You see it's going from zero up to one. This is reflectance, all right? Notice the different lines. All of these lines are the same. They're solid black lines, but they've got them labeled right on the graph. Now that you're through with that, looking at that, now you're ready to go down and read, continue reading. Don't forget these little paragraphs when you see one here because a lot of times there's some information in this that you need. Io's whole disk reflectance, which means the, re the reflectance of Io's entire visible surface measured all at once was measured at two different times. Figure two shows these data along with the reflectance data calculated using a computer model. This model shows the combination of materials from figure one and what they would produce the closest match to the measured reflectance data. According to the model, the overall composition of Io's surface is 15% SO2, 50% orange, 20% red sulfur, and 15% white sulfur. So we look at this graph. Notice in this particular case, the X and the Y axis is the same as the first graph. The information plotted is different, but it's showing you reflectance still. So we've got the reflectance, Io observation one, two, and computer model. Now we go to study two. 
at two different times. Reflectances were measured on the crater floors of two volcanoes, Pele and Cert. Figure three shows the reflectance data. So you look at Pele, it is crater floor data. You see you got time one, time two, and these two are fairly close to each other, very low. You look at Cert, crater floor data, and we see the reflectance, and it's significantly different than Pele. Now we come over to study three. Reflectance data were taken from several large plumes and several small plumes. The average data are, on, is in, are in figure four. So when you look at figure four, again, same X and Y axis, same type of information we're plotting on here, and we see the, the reflectance of sulfur from the large plumes and the small plumes. Now we're ready to answer some questions. Number eight, at the wavelengths in study one, the wavelength of light increases the reflectances of S allotropes and the ed of SO2 do which of the following? Now this is one I call sort of a divide and conquer. Let's find out first what happens to the sulfur. If we go to the S allotropes over here, what are they doing? We're following this graph up. Looks like brown increases, red increases, orange increases, and white increases. Now the white sort of rolls off near the top, but it is continuing to increase all the way to the end. So we can go with F or G. Now we flip to the other side. What's happening to the SO2? Well, I follow my SO2 line, it goes up, but then it comes back down. So I know it's not F, which says increase only, it has to be G, increase, then decrease. Now we look at number nine. According to study three, compared with the corresponding average reflectances of small plumes, large plumes on IO have an average reflectance at a given wavelength, that is what? Okay, this is one you have to watch out for. They're wanting to see if you can pay attention. You've got the, the small plumes are the dotted line, and it's on top of the large plumes. The large plumes are lower. So when we come back over here and look at the answers, it says large plumes on IO have an average reflectance at a given wavelength that is what? It's always lower than what it's finding on the small plumes. Now we go to number 10. According to study one, the reflectance of white sulfur at a wavelength of 0.4 micrometers is closest to which of the following values? So we come back over to the graph, the first one. You follow up the white sulfur. You see how that line goes and it starts taking up? Well, right before it starts taking up is right where the point four is. If you just draw a straight line up from that point four and come across, you should be reading pretty close to point two. That would be the answer, which is gonna be H. Number 11, according to study one and two, the crater floor of the volcano Pele has a reflectances most similar to which of the following S allotropes? Okay, well, if I look over here at Pele and the line is going sort of low, it looks a lot like my brown sulfur, doesn't it? This is the brown sulfur in the lab data. This is what I'm getting off of Pele. Looks the same. Brown sulfur is the answer. It's just this simple. Number 12, if the average reflectances for large plumes and the small plumes had been measured at a wavelength of 0.61 micrometers in study three, those reflectances would have been closest to which of the following? Now, this is a question the ACT has on almost every test where they want to see if you can extrapolate. Sometimes they want to see if you can interpolate between two points. This is extrapolate. They've given you a graph going out to 0 0.6. They want to know what's going to happen at 0 0.61 just past the right of your graph. Well, you look at your lines and they're coming up like this and like this. 0.61 is just past the edge of our graph. They expect you to know that the graph should continue in the line that they've given you. They're not gonna have something that changes dramatically in that short distance. So if we look over here, according to, um, according to study three, what would it be? Large plumes. We follow the line for large plumes out and it's coming out pretty close to 0.5. So we come over and now we're down to G or H. We flip to the other side, the large plumes. You go to the large plumes and you see that it's 0.9 and that would be the answer. Now one of the little tricks you can do after you get a little bit more practice at this, notice large plumes, I've got 2.5s, but I don't have any answers on the small plumes that repeat. So if I nail the answer for the small plumes, I don't even have to look at the large plumes because there's only one that's gonna work. If I look up and I see on this chart that the, large, the small plumes are 0.9, I've got the answer in one shot, H. Number 13, according to study one, white sulfur has a reflectance of 0.98 at a wavelength of 0.6 micrometers. This means that white S reflects what? Okay, told us reflectance is the fraction of light that's reflected back from a surface from what was striking the surface. So now 0.98 means 98% or 98 hundredths of the light. Almost all of the light 
striking the surface is reflecting. That would be B, 98% of the 6.6 micrometer light that strikes its surface. Now, that wraps us up on passage two. Next video, passage three. We'll see you there. Thanks again for joining.